Hey everyone, earlier today we had the life letter part 1 for patch 6.2, so I'll be giving you a brief overview of all the important information that was shared in said life letter. First thing they talked about was actually for patch 6.18, this patch will be coming out on July the 5th and will introduce data center travel. This is also the first time that a minor patch will have a 24 hour maintenance, but I'm not too surprised by that. Additionally, they're also adding a new data center for Japan during this time and new worlds for the EU data centers. And they're also replacing the server equipment for the EU data centers as well. So let's then go into patch 6.2 stuff. The patch will be called Buried Memory and will be coming out late August. As per usual, we'll be getting new main scenario quests. There's also the continuation of the Hildebrand and Tataru's Grand Endeavor quests. And for the Tataru side quests, you'll need to have finished the Shadow of Mag quest series. These are the Heaven's War 24 man raids. So if you haven't done those yet, then now is the time to do them. The Hildebrand quests are also important because they will be a part of our new weapon enhancement quests, aka our relic weapons, so make sure you do the Hildebrand quest as well before patch 6.25, as that is when they will be coming out. We're also getting our second set of tribal quests, this time around for gathering, and it will be the Omicrons. There's a new dungeon, which is going to be part of the main scenario quest, and this time around we got a name for it, the Fell Court of Troya. A new trial, but this name is still spoiler, so we won't know until we unlock it. And as for the raids, we'll be getting the second tier of Pandemonium, called Abyssos, both normal and savage. And for the first time ever, they will be delaying savage for one week. So on the patch release, we will get the normal mode raids, and then one week later, we will get the release of savage. This is some sort of a test run, so they'll be looking at feedback from the community, and then they will see if they keep doing this going forward, or if they go back to the simultaneous release of normal and savage. For me personally, I really like this one week delay as it allows for you to enjoy the story and most likely get your crafted gear ready and then you're all set for when Savage comes out and you don't have to rush through the story because your static is waiting for you or anything like that. So I like it. For Unreal, we're getting Sephiroth Unreal and they ended up adjusting a few mechanics in here to make it easier and less punishing. We're also getting some job adjustments for both PvE and PvP, but the extensive changes to Dragoon and Astrologian will be postponed, so we'll have to wait a bit longer on those. They're also planning on making some adjustments to critical and direct hits, because a lot of crit and direct hit buffing skills seem less useful now that there are more jobs that have guaranteed crit direct hits like Warrior or Samurai but more information on that is coming in the part 2 life letter. For PvP, Season 2 of Crystalline Conflict will start on Tuesday with patch 6.18, and Season 3 as well as Series 2 will start in 6.2. Rival Wings is also going to be making a return in 6.2. We're getting duty support for the following dungeons that you can see on screen and the Steps of Fate trial will now also be a solo instance, so you can't get it in your trial roulette anymore. And the Torn Marsh trial is also getting revamped, apparently they're going to be making it a lot easier as it was apparently too hard as the first 8-man trial. Starting in patch 6.25, we're also going to be getting a new type of content called Variant Dungeons. These are the Criterion Dungeons that they mentioned in the previous life letter. And these are not going to be the deep dungeons. They're still working on those, so this is going to be something different. Depending on your decisions and your movement throughout the dungeon, there are going to be different routes of progression. It's level 90 content that you can challenge alone or with a party of up to four players, and there are no role restrictions for this one. And the enemy's strength will change depending on your party size. As for the different routes, your story experience will be different depending on the route that you choose, but you can run the dungeon multiple times to experience all of the story. Another path, Criterion Dungeons, is another new type of content. This is again for level 90 players, but these are a high difficulty challenge for 4 players, and you will require the normal party composition of 1 tank, 1 healer and 2 DPS. They look similar to the variant dungeons, but the structure and the enemy strength is going to be completely different. You can think of it as normal mode for the variant dungeon and then the extreme and savage for the criterion dungeons. For the extreme one, you will have matchmaking enabled and normal resurrections will not be available. Instead, each party member will have a limited amount of revival actions. This is to prevent some parties from having an advantage because they have a summoner or a red mage for example. 
For the Savage version there will be no reses allowed and there will also be no matchmaking. If your party wipes, all enemies will also respawn and if you take too long then enemies will also become much stronger, so there's some sort of an enrage in place. Personally, this is something that I've been wanting for a very long time, so I'm very excited to give these dungeons a try. Moving on to more casual content then, we have Island Sanctuary. They were unable to show anything in-game for this because there are still too many bugs in place, so that will be for the next life letter. The island itself is solo content and you can do all sorts of activities like gathering materials, building facilities, capturing and then caring for creatures, crafting items, etc. For the materials that you'll be collecting, you will also be given a separate inventory, so no need to worry about the items cluttering your normal inventory space. You can also earn special rewards by doing this content, but I don't think they mentioned anything specific, so maybe we'll learn more about that during the part 2 life letter. The adventure plates and portraits are also transitioning from beta to the official release and they will also be getting some adjustments and additions. Now because the old data from the existing portraits can't be transferred to the new version you will have to remake your plates and your portraits. And then we still have a few miscellaneous updates before we can wrap things up. As per usual, we're getting new tombstones and high item level crafted gear, and something new is that we'll be able to request repairs from other players both outside and inside of instances. So this is great for those multi-boss raids with checkpoints, like the Dragonsong's Reprise for example. So if you can't repair your own gear, then you won't have to re-instance anymore, you can just request someone in your party to repair it for you. But I would assume that that person still needs to have their crafters leveled, but a nice addition nevertheless. They also added a display of combo actions for your skills, but if you prefer the old version then you can just switch it back. We're getting double the capacity in our Glamour Dresser, so we're going from 400 slots all the way to 800, and rare materials will also be added to the ethereal reduction for gatherers. And that is it for all of the important information that was given in the Life Letter Part 1 for 6.2, and in the future we'll be getting some extra information closer to the release of the patch itself in Life Letter Part 2. But for now, that's gonna do it for me, so I wanna thank you for watching, I wanna thank my patrons for their support, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.